Hi, OWC Vic here to show you how to seamlessly operate your OS and user data on separate volumes. System administrators have been doing this sort of thing for years, usually to add more storage to a system. Doing that allows you to keep the OS on one drive and give each user their own separate drive. With the explosion of solid state drives on the market though, this opens up another opportunity. Modern SSDs, like OWC's Mercury Extreme Pro 6G, are super fast, but the large ones can get kind of pricey for the average user. On the other hand, most standard drives have a lot of storage for the price, but are much slower. By putting both in your computer and storing apps in the OS on your SSD, while keeping documents, pictures, music, and all that on your standard hard drive, you get a balanced mix of speed and storage. Just installing both drives and storing files on them is kind of clunky, though. You have to manually find files and make sure that there's not multiples on each. With the method I'm going to show you, it'll look as seamless as if you were using a single drive. If you have a standard drive with everything installed on it already, there's a good chance that it's actually more than would fit on a smaller SSD, and that's okay, because by doing it this way, your account's files never move. Most users will probably try this with their MacBook Pros and an OWC data doubler, which is how I'm doing it here but it also works just fine on a desktop machine, such as a Mac Pro with multiple drives, an iMac with an OWC turnkey upgrade, or any desktop with an external hard drive. Let me warn you now though, this is an advanced setup that involves moving data around. Because we're moving partitions around, there's a good chance that it will break boot camp, so we don't recommend this method for systems set up to boot into both OS X and Windows. As with any system modification of this nature, make sure 100% that you have a backup of all your data before continuing. So let's get going. The first thing you want to do is make sure you got the username and password for the account or accounts you want to move. Just write it down and set it aside for later. Next, open the Accounts Preference pane. It's called Users and Groups in Lion, and click the lock in the lower left hand corner. An authentication window should pop up, where you can enter a password if you need one. Now, click the plus button on the left to add a new account. A drop-down should appear. Fill in this information, giving it a name like boot admin, and also a decent password. Make sure to set it as an administrator account from the drop-down menu at the top. When you're done, click Create. Then, shut down and install or attach both drives to your computer. I'm going to be installing an OWC data doubler to use my original drive in the optical bay and an OWC Mercury Extreme Pro 6G SSD in the main drive bay. However, your particular setup may be different. Make sure you use the recommended setup and installation instructions for your computer. Now that the drives are where they need to go, we need to install a clean OS on the new drive. Turn your computer back on and log into one of your accounts. It doesn't matter which one, we're only using it to format a drive and disk utility. Once you log in, you should get a dialog box that says there's a drive that can't be read. Select the option to initialize the drive. If you don't get one, go to your Applications folder, then Utilities and double-click on Disk Utility. Select the new drive. It's usually the only one without its own name. Click on the Partition tab. Select one partition as the volume scheme. Name the drive and set the format to Mac OS Extended Journal. Finally, click Apply. You will be asked whether or not you wish to proceed. Tell it yes. After a short while, your drive will be formatted and ready to install. You can shut down your computer again. If you're running 10.5, 10.6, or have the USB installer of Lion, boot from the installer disk or drive and just follow the prompts to install it on your SSD. If you have the download version of 10.7 or it came pre-installed on your computer, you'll need an internet connection. Restart and hold down the option key at startup. Select the recovery partition, then select Reinstall Lion and follow the screen prompts to install the OS on your new drive. Depending on your connection speed, it may take a while to download. No matter which OS you're installing, it should restart automatically once it's done. Once you've restarted from the fresh installation, follow the on-screen instructions to set up your Mac. 
When it gets to the point where it asks if you want to import a previous installation, tell it that you'd like to import from another hard disk, then choose your original hard drive. At the dialog screen where you choose which user accounts you want to import, deselect all accounts except the boot admin account you created earlier. Then make sure the other options like applications and other files are selected and begin the transfer. Migration Assistant will then transfer all the appropriate files over to your new drive and create the boot administrator account. Eventually you'll get to your desktop. Now the real fun begins. Once you're logged into your boot admin account, you'll want to go to Software Update in the Apple menu to make sure all your system software is current and restart. You'll want to do it a couple of times till there are no more updates seen. Once you're all up to date, open up System Preferences and go back to the Accounts Preference pane. Just like before, create a new account. This time, though, give it the same username and password as the account on the original drive that you want to access. If it's your main account, then you should also set it as an administrator account. When you're done, click Create. Next, right-click or control-click on the name of the account you just created and select the Advanced Options pop-up. Click on the Choose button to the right of the Home Directory field and navigate to the Home folder on your original drive. It's located in the Users folder. Select it and click the Open button. You should notice that your Home Directory info has changed to reflect the new location. Click OK in the lower right, confirming with your boot admin account if necessary. One last thing to do is select Login Options on the left and make sure the Automatic Logon option is set to Off. You can now go back to the Main System Preferences window and go to the Startup Disk Preference pane to make sure that your new drive is set as the default boot disk and restart. Once you've restarted, log in using your newly added account. All your files should be where they were originally. You should also take the opportunity to ensure all the apps you use work properly. Keep in mind some apps may need to be re-registered in order to work properly. Once you've verified all your files and apps are working the way you want them to, you're good to go. We can now either add more accounts if we want by adding them and pointing them to the appropriate home folders. We're only moving this one though, so now we can move on to cleanup. Go to your original drive and delete all the files except the Users folder. If you're running Lion, your boot drive is hidden in the Finder, so you will need to command-click the title bar of a Finder window and select the computer name to find it. Since we've already installed and transferred these applications, preferences, and other files to our new drive, all they're doing here is taking up space. Simply drag them to the trash and empty. You can do the same with the home folder on the new drive that we briefly created for the relocated account. Then go into the users folder and delete any folders for any accounts you moved. You should keep the administrator account we made on the main hard drive. If something goes wrong with the drive you're keeping your data on, you'll at least have something to boot to. If you're running Snow Leopard or earlier, your computer's now good to go. If you're running Lion, we've got another step before we're through. Your original Lion drive had a recovery partition installed on it, which you probably used to install the new OS. The problem is that the new installation has that recovery drive too. While there's nothing wrong with keeping it around, it's kind of redundant and takes up space you could use better otherwise. Unfortunately, this recovery partition can't be seen in the regular disk utility. To get rid of it, we'll need to use the command line version from the terminal. Log out of your moved account, go into your boot admin account, and open the terminal. First, type in diskutil list and hit return. 
This will bring up a list of the drives attached to your computer in the volumes on them. Look for the name of your data drive and take note of the identifier listed to the right. Do the same for the recovery HD partition for the same drive. In our case, the name of our data drive is Macintosh HD. We can see then that the Macintosh HD is shown as Disk 1 S2 and the appropriate recovery partition is Disk 1 S3. At this point, we're going to be erasing and merging sections of the drive, which runs the risk of deleting files. If you don't have a backup, there's a good chance you could accidentally lose your data. To erase the recovery partition, type in diskutil erase volume with a capital V, HFS plus blank forward slash dev forward slash in the identifier of the recovery partition. So for us, it'll read diskutil erase volume HFS plus blank slash dev slash disk one S3. Your exact command may look a little different. Once you hit return, it'll erase this partition, so be sure you've got the right one. So now we've erased the extra recovery partition, but it's still separate from your data. To add that space back to your data partition, type in diskutil merge partitions with a capital P, HFS plus the name of your data drive with a backward slash before any spaces in the name, the identifier of your data partition, then the identifier of your former recovery partition. In our case, it would read as diskutil merge partitions HFS plus Macintosh backslash HD disk one S2 disk one S3. When you hit return this time, the former recovery partition will be merged into your data partition. This may take a little bit of time. Under most circumstances, the HFS plus formatting of the original drive should allow things to expand normally. However, there's the risk of both partitions being wiped, so do this only if you have a backup of your files. You can now log back into your main account. If you need to occasionally save files to the SSD rather than the hard drive, you can always create a folder on the SSD, then create an alias on your desktop to that folder. Any files saved there will be saved to the SSD rather than the slower hard drive. However, if you're going to frequently use your SSD for capture of files, such as with GarageBand, you'll likely be better off creating a new account, which will save to the SSD by default. Once you're done recording, you can then transfer those files to the platter-based drive for editing in your main account. And on that note, your computer's ready to go. We'll see you next time with more tips and tricks.